So today we're going to talk about a very special pair of shoes. This is a St. Crispin's uh, Model 646. Uh, this is my first experience with St. Crispin's and it was really quite an experience. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about it and mostly I'll just focus on the shoes. Thanks for watching. Hey, I've organized all my playlists on this channel so that you're able to easily find different types of shoes, different brands of shoes, as well as uh, finding all my shoe battles, uh, worth the price shoe reviews, etc., all in one place. Enjoy. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the M646, which is a very special shoe to me. Uh, this is the very first uh, that I've experienced with the brand St. Crispin's, uh, which is a hand welted shoe out of Romania. And um, this is a beautiful hand sewn pattern creating a diamond cap toe and a U throat as well as well as heel caps in this beautiful Russian grain leather. Now, if you look at, you know, this leather, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a brush here so you can see kind of how this works just really picks up the shine very well. And you see it's got that nice little shine on the cap. Just a really, really nice looking shoe. And the, uh, the hatch grain or Russian grain as they call it at St. Christmas, uh, it does a good job allowing the creasing to blend in. And, and really retaining the, uh, the shape of the shoe. Now it's got a back seam here, which you can see there. And you can see it's got, um, I probably need to refresh the polish on this more than just a little brushing, but it's got um, uh, just a, a, a really beautiful uh, construction. Take a look at, see how, how the, the heel sack is. See how thin the heel layers are. They look thick on the back, but then as you look in the, the front here, they're actually quite thin and you just have that uh, thick layer uh, rubber there. See the rubber insert like so. The nail work on the heel, nail work on the initials, and of course the pegs on the waist. Okay. Not a fiddle back, not a bevel, but a really good waist and a very significant arch. Okay. Now this arch uh, is based on the last, which uh, provides me a lot of support. Feels really good. It's very solid. Factory installed toe plates, perfectly smooth. Okay. Um, and then this, uh, this is an option that I chose, which is 180 degree Norwich's Norwegian welt. Okay. holding um, the hand welted uh, shoe together there. Um, St. Crispin's uses, uses machine stitching to stitch the sole. Um, and you can decide how much of that they do, but you can also see that stitch density there is something else. Okay. Now, this is the first shoe that I also had made on a modified last for me. Um, so this is uh, the way that the experience worked was um, uh, they call it uh, cyber um, fitting, right? So I, uh, I sent in my measurements. Um, I actually took a video of it, which I'll release at some point. But uh, then they sent me a pair of trial shoes. I wore the trial shoes around for a few hours, took lots of pictures, a very short video for them. I sent it back. They said, okay, this is perfect. We have the information that we need and they sent me my shoes. And the shoes really came out quite nice. Um, uh, just did a really fantastic job. Now, I chose the last. Um, on, on, the, on the website, they have a version of this shoe uh, that actually has this last. This is called the Beach as a Last. Um, although most of the shoes, if you look at the ad that I um, included here for the, for the, the website, um, it's not this last. And, and I thought that this last looked particularly good. So I wanted to give this one a try. 
Uh, and it's a little bit bold, you know, in terms of the chisel. And I think it came out really, really nice. Um, and this is really the hard part about doing an MTO shoe, um, something that's not exactly what's on there. So you're choosing to change the leather, you're choosing to change the welt, you're, you're looking to change the sole. Um, you, you know, when you're, when you're looking at St. Crispin's, they have a lot of options on their website, but then it's MTO. And as I was looking at it, the price isn't really different to do MTO and it's a six to eight week process, no matter what. So why not MTO? Why not just get what you want? So, um, you know, and you can uh, decide, oh, you know, I wanna get uh, hollow trees, I wanna get cherry trees. These are just solid trees. And, you know, they have the number there of my last. And um, so carved for me, okay, carved for this shoe. And it's kind of a cool, uh, cool thing. It's also a very, very good fit, which of course is the most important thing. Um, you know, when you look at St. Crispin's in general, I mean, the box is like a no frills box. Uh, it's literally <laughs> stapled together. Um, you know, it's thick cardboard, it's very, very functional, but they don't waste the time and the effort on the frills. They really spend most of their time on the shoes. Now, when I did the unboxing video, it had, um, you know, like the little um, silicon packets were wrapped in, in cloth, which is really nice. There was a thing of potpourri in with the shoes to make them smell nice, which was great. But at the end, very, very utilitarian box, beautiful shoe trees, beautiful shoes. And these shoes are just phenomenal. You get the little toe plate smile there. Um, you've got the, the way the pegging is just a little bit visible when you're wearing the shoe, not very much, just a little. Um, but they are by far the okay, most comfortable shoes I own. And they should be because they're on a modified last, right? This is as close to bespoke as I've ever had. Uh, now, keep in mind, right? When, when we talk about the difference between bespoke and made to measure, uh, there is a big difference. The difference is the way the shoe is put together is based on a regular pattern, okay, for made to measure. So they decide, you know, the the how long the toe is going to be. They decide how long the u throat is going to be, how narrow the u throat is going to be. They do all of this, um, where the the heel caps are, what type of heel cap it is, all that stuff. That's all part of the regular design of the shoe. In bespoke. All of that, the whole pattern of the whole shoe is made just for you. It's a pretty big difference, okay? So the entire way the shoe goes together is completely made for you. Now they may have a general design that they're gonna follow, but then the proportions of everything is really designed for your foot. Now this can make a big difference um, when you're looking at it compared to a ready-made factory shoe. Um, and, and let me tell you why. Um, I had the opportunity to go to a shoe factory for, for a ready-made um, uh, factory that does quite a lot of shoes, right? And what they explained is that they have one set of um, uppers, okay? The uppers are sewn and in one location and they're combined with the linings and everything's sewn together. And then it's shipped to their main factory where they assemble the shoes, kind of like an assembly plant for cars, right? And when they assemble them, they last them and they put the soles on. Okay, so um, during that process, they use one set of uppers, like four sizes, three or four sizes. I don't remember exactly how, how they did it, but it, it was like three whole sizes, so like six half sizes. So that means that you have one dimension and then everything is based on what size last you put it on, which means your toe cap could be this long, could be this long, could be this long, depending on what size you are. That's a pretty big difference, okay? Assuming that this part is probably the same size, because it's gonna be the same size, right? So that means where it lasts is where the dimensions change. So you could have somebody who's at the very, very beginning of the size of a, a pattern, have a medallion that's completely in on the edge. And then on your largest size, the medallion's up here. 
that is a, a significant difference. And that is something that, uh, you know, you don't get when you get into bespoke shoes because everything is basically made for that shoe. So just something different. Um, and as you get into the higher ranges, they don't do it for three sizes. They might do one size. Okay, so it's a lot closer, but, um, and I think you get that when you get into the Edward Greens and the Gaziano and Gerlings and, and, and the, you know, much higher price shoes. But then again, you're paying two to three times as much as well. So it makes sense that they would make that difference for it, but that is something to consider. Now, I don't know that Gaziano and Gerling and Edward Green do that. I know many of you do. Please uh, let us know in the comments, because I think that that's very interesting to look at. But back to these, back to these St. Crispins. These St. Crispins are just absolutely phenomenal. I would expect St. Crispins to also, you know, do the cutting and everything based on this particular shoe. That's why it takes six weeks to do. Um, and so I would expect the measurements to be cut based on this size shoe as well. Not specifically to the last, but to the size. Okay. Um, as you look at the, um, the nail pattern, um, having the little L all the way around, I think it's very cool. Um, the work that they did on the toe plate, um, also very nice. It's nice that it's a four screw and not two screw. Um, and the fact that it's perfectly smooth um, is nice as well. And now the Norwegian welt um, and having it at, a, at 180 degree versus 270 would have it come down to here um, versus 360, which would mean it would go all the way around, right? Um, that is different. There are people who have mentioned, okay, and again, I, I am not an expert, they've mentioned that if it's 180 degrees, they're not sure how functional it is um, because um, they're not sure whether it, it actually lasts. I tend to think that they're probably not wasting time and doing it like that, but that is something to, uh, to look at and to, uh, to get a good understanding of as we go. Now, a couple cool things about the shoe. Um, one, it has a really, really different top line. On the outside here, it's a really low top line compared to the side. Um, that makes it much, much more comfortable for me. Um, it also has an incredibly smooth lining. Um, again, the most comfortable shoes I own, um, which is saying something, I own a lot of shoes. Um, and the um, just the way that it fits, the way that my foot sets in this um, is just incredible. Okay. So um, really, really good uh, feel to it and really good um, durability. Now I've worn the shoe, I think three, four times and, uh, the wear on the sole is minimal as you'd expect. Uh, and it also is, uh, perfectly patterned, which is also uh, pretty nice that it's right in this area. It doesn't go, you know, too high or too low or anything like that. Again, which you'd expect. Um, it's got, um, and again, as I said before, the, the creasing on it is very minimal. So even when you look at both of them, um, the way that it, it hides in the grain is just really, really solid. So uh, just incredible shoes, um, very good. When we talk about price though, how do you decide if something is worth the price when we're talking about, you know, 1200 pounds or 1200 euros? Um, and in this case, I mean, I spent quite a bit more than that because I needed to have the last made for me as well. Um, and then you have other options, right? So. Um, different leathers can cost more. You do pay for the toe plates. Um, you want the initials, they charge for that. Um, there's a lot of different options that you can choose and, and, and you can see. Now, um, there's a couple options that are interesting, right? You can choose to have the soles glued on. Um, you can have them um, stitched on. Uh, you can have a, a five millimeter, six millimeter, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter sole, which is very interesting. Um, the way the waist is done is also depending on the, on the how, how you have the soles and the and the everything attached. Um, you can choose different welts, just like you can with most MTOs, um, and uh, and you can choose your leather. Now, leather choices uh, within St. Crispin is an incredible experience. Um, you can choose from a number of different suede's. Um, Kudu, they have a um, great amount of grains you can look at. They have the, the hatch grain, they have shell cordovan, they have alligator, crocodile, alligator, one of the two exotics. I think if they call it exotic and then you can choose. Um, I didn't really spend that much time on that particular part. But um, just, just an incredible selection. So you really do have that great option on, on being able to choose what you want. And they have service. 
So, um, you know, there was a person that I worked with um, and she was able to, um, uh, actually I worked with a, a number of people actually, and they were able to uh, make recommendations, uh, have uh, if I had questions, they would do that. And then uh, Philip Carr, who, who runs St. Crispin's, um, was in touch with me as well. So it was just a great experience and um, something that uh, I, I, I firmly recommend to any, anybody who, who is going through it. Um, in terms of value, it's an expensive shoe. It's an extraordinary luxury item. Um, you know, it's not bespoke, right? So it's, it's, it's not that expensive, but um, it, is, it is very expensive. And, and it's just, it's, it's a, a question of what you're paying for, right? I view it as I'm paying for quality, I'm paying for the craftsmen, I'm paying for the folks that are taking that time over that six week period to build the shoes and to build them with the utmost care. Um, and, and that's what I feel like I got and I feel like I, I got my money's worth. So for what that's worth. Now I know other people are gonna look at it totally different and, and obviously everybody's entitled to their own opinion on how you value something like that. But um, I, I feel like shoes uh, can be a piece of art and like a piece of art, um, I, I, I think that the, the value is more intrinsic uh, than simply, um, you know, uh, straightforward based on number of hours and wage per hour or something like that. So um, these shoes are art and I like them. So anyway, that is my thoughts on these shoes. Uh, I'm anxious to hear your thoughts on them as well. Please let me know what you think. Thank you.